नागेन्द्रहाराय त्रिलोचनाय भस्मांगराय न महेश्वराय निताय शुदाय दिगंबराय तस्म नकार नम शिवाय मंदाकिनी सललचंदन चर्चिताय नंदीश्वर प्रमातनाथ महेश्वराय मंदार पुष्प बहु पुष्प सुपूजिताय तस्म मखार ये नम शिवाय शिवाय गौरी वदनारविंद सूर्याय दक्षाद्वरनाशकाय श्रीनीलखंत भ्रष्टवजा तस्म शिखार ये नम शिवाय वशिष्ठकुंभोदव गौतमराय मुनींदेवरचितशेखराय चंद्रार्क्रवैश्वरनलोचनाय तस्म वकार ये नम शिवाय यक्षस्वूपाय जताधराय पीनाकहस्ताय सनातनाय दिव्याय देवाय दिगंबराय तस्म यकार ये नम शिवाय पंचक्षरमीद पुण्य ये पति चास्नद शिवलोक वापनोति शिवेना सह मोदिते जय शिव शंकर नमा शंकर शिव शंकर शंभो जय गिरिजापति भवानी शंकर शिव शंकर शंभो जय गिरिजापति भवानी शंकर शिव शंकर शंभो ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय प्रभु नाम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय प्रभु नाम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय प्रभु नाम शिवाय adorations to lord shiva and we see him in that lingam there this is a beautiful lingam a refreshing lingam and uh, when i see it it is inspiration well how are you this morning and uh, well it's a nice day here in new york the sun is going to come out shortly and um you know look at the trees there's the sun but it hasn't risen yet to the height where we can see him reflecting in the water but anyway let us pay adoration to guru because swami pranavanand the ji guru and all these great spiritual masters we rely on them we have to bring them in our presence we have to bring them in our mind we have to let them be prominent in our our very being Okay, let's uh, do the Guru. Dhyana Moolam Guru Murti Pooja Moolam Guru Param Mantra Moolam Guru Vakyam Moksha Moolam Guru Kripam And let us do the adorations to Surya Narayan Om Bhura Bhava Swaha तत्सुरवरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्धीम धियो यो न प्रचोदय ओ भर्भवस्व तत्सुरवरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्धीम धियो यो न प्रचोदय ओ भर्भवस्व तत्सुरवरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्धीम धियो यो न प्रचोदयत अदोरेशन सूर्यनारायण वेल वेलकम अगेन टू मंदिर 
स्वागत सब जन ऐसा मंदिर भक्ति स्वाति की दार सुंदर सुमधुर गान हमारो रंजन नर नर नान ईश सगुन निर्गुण अविनाशी मात पिता और प्यार तोर भये हम वत्स सदाई तारो में संसार स्वागत सब जन ऐसा मंदिर भक्ति स्वाति की ढार सुंदर सुमर गान हमारो रंजन नर नर नार वी आर वी आर एंजॉइंग दिस एंड दिस ब्यूटिफुल मंदिर लुक हाउ ब्यूटिफुल इट इज है इट्स the mandir has no limitations it has no walls it has no ceiling it is all the murtis of the manifestation of that consciousness art water fire air and space which is close to us we are so close to our our god okay now the life in us everything that is that life that we have in us this is god also you know yesterday i, I got a comment from um, one of the viewers and uh, we were talking about the ashram in nepal and and like that and the gentleman was asking how can i start an ashram and it took me back a little because i guess he doesn't understand properly and it's my duty to explain that an ashram we don't say we want to start an ashram as in the case with swami pranavananda ji he announced his coming as lord shiva and he didn't need a guru in his childhood he was doing everything by himself and he would have built his do a austerity and at the age of 20 years old 1916 he would have got god realization by then he would have gathered followers his school friends boys and they would have done relief work during when they were flooding in bangladesh which is often and then when he got god realization then he realized that he has to his he he has to start an uh, an organization and that arg- organization is bharat seva ashram chain and it's an ashram So to answer the question of the gentleman is you don't start an ashram ashram is the um, is the instrument that is used to sustain for sustenance like Vishnu Bhagwan is a sustainer so I mean Pranavanand ji is a sustainer so the ashram becomes the big his big his bigger body is ashram has will become his bigger body and he would have said me my ashram and my spiritual power cannot be separated so when we talk about an ashram it is a place where an institute an institution that is highly spiritual so if you're not a spiritual person you cannot say okay i'm going to start an ashram it's not like that it is not like the mandir where mandirs we do the rituals and the pundit ji will do all of that and basically mandirs are places of business because you know you go there and uh, they have to sustain it it's usually family owned and operated and you know um this is how they have to sustain themselves by by charging fees and and soliciting funds so that they could do it but it's really a family owned and operated business whereas an ashram is monks and the spiritual leader whether he is in form or without form because swami pranavana ji would have said after he left his body i um he he would have said before that you know um i will guide my ashram from behind the curtain what he was saying is behind the curtain is that he wouldn't have a form but he is that all pervading all powerful all knowing satchidan and truth consciousness and bliss so from that point of view god without form the, he will be managing the ashram well i hope i clear that up 
And today I want to talk about a beautiful trip. I went to um, Italy twice. And at the end I'll, I'll tell you why it's so beautiful. That we went to South India for a conference and, um, and spiritual leaders were there from all faiths. And um, we did the conference, but at the same time there was the bombing in Bali. And two young girls from southern Italy, Italy Casarano, they were killed, and so we do memorial services. And part of the program was to, to of the of, of, there's a cultural program, and um, the Sufi dancers were there, and this was started by Della La Rumi, that famous poet, of, um, uh, I believe in, in Islam, and they would have twirled for hours and looking at them as they twirl and um, it's meditation in motion. I enjoy that so much. Anyway, we, that's one trip. And then I visited um, there a family who would have made homemade pasta, Italian style, and they had the farm with tomatoes and olives. So we visited those farms. What an experience. Next time I went and we went to Venice for a conference, and then after that, we would proceed to Florence. And um, in Venice, we were able to ride it in gondola and see how Venice is situated on um, wooden piles. The houses are built on wooden piles in the ocean. What, a, what an engineering feat. Anyway, we went to Florence. And there was this uh, uh, statue of David. And I could have remembered my friend, um, Wayne Dyer, he would have spoke about this and um, I had a chance to meet him a couple of times and we will talk and we will always joke about our hairstyles. Anyway, so the story goes like this, that a question was asked of Michelangelo when he was carving the statue of David and he, the question was, how is it, uh, Michael, you were able to create such a beautiful lifelike figure? And he would have said, David was already in there, in the marble, the beautiful marble, the square marble. He started with a block of marble. I just chip away the excess. Ah, you see, this is the story I want to bring. In our lives, we have to chip away the excess. Because meaning that we have to take away everything and what we'll be left with, we'll be chip away everything and what we'll be left with the realization that we are all manifestation of goddess, gods and goddesses. We are manifestation of consciousness and we are gods and goddesses. So you have to think also, what are you not doing to chip away? Or are you accumulating unnecessary baggages in your journey towards this moksha? Well, to chip away meaning that First of all, let us talk about this Abhiman, that when we chip away the Abhiman and when we don't have our calling card should not be what I have, we should be talk about bragging what we have and what we do because that's insultive to someone who is less um, fortunate than you are. Um, what you do, your reputation, oh, I'm so and so, I'm so smart and I came from a powerful background. I came from, a, a, you know, a Brahmin background and, you know, insinuating that you're less than me. My reputation, I'm different from you. Things are missing in my life. Yes, you have everything, but contentment is not there. And why contentment is not there? Because desires, endless desires are there and they drive you into sorrow and suffering, mental and physical. Where can there be a spiritual life in that? We have to chip away that. We have to be contented in our lives. And then um, we are separated from God. This is the most killing one. That when we say we are separated from God, how is it that possible? It is not possible that we are separated to God. We are in, our, in ourselves the embodiment of consciousness and the five elements. So we are gods and goddesses. This is the realization. And all the great soul, Krishna Bhagavan, came and that's what he was saying. He was saying, you know, I like this sloka, that, um, you know, yagyat kat karma no yatra lokoyam karma bandana taratam karma kauntiya mukta sangha samachara 
Arjuna, lift yourself up. And he's telling us to lift yourself up from an animalistic level. Look out, help me to sustain this universe. And if you do that, I'll, I'll bring you to closer to me. I'll lift you to the enlightened state. And that will be your moksha. So today the message is so beautiful that, you know, to be in an institution like Bharat Seva Ashram Shank. And Adi Shankaracharya was the one that really, really established ashrams from east and west and north of India. And Bharat Seva Ashram Shank, it's under that lineage. We have the Vishnavite and Shivite. And these are the belief system. And I had the opportunity to work with Swamiji's from different ashrams. And they're so powerful. I had the opportunity in, 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 uh, to, to listen to um, the, the, the Pope. I met him and shook his hand in Ground Zero in New York. And he got his name, Pope, Pope Francis, from Francis of Assisi, that great saint who would have been, his greatest audience was the birds and the animals. Because why? He, he was so pure that he could relate to them. And they, these animals could relate to him. They saw no danger in his presence. When we come to that state, then we are closer to our liberation. So this morning, let us lift ourselves up and, um, and uh, you know, chip away, keep chipping away. Because why? Let your mind um, expand in every direction and your, your, let your, your consciousness also expand in every direction. And then you'll find out that you are a far greater person than you ever dream yourself to be. No more sorrow, no more suffering. Just bliss, Satchidanand. I leave you this message this morning and let us chant some Guru Mantra. You know, if you don't have your Guru Mantra, when I hang up with you here, please chant mantra for at least five minutes. Om Sri Guru Shivaye Nama. 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 Om. Well, have a beautiful day, and it's so pleasant to be with you as usual. Join again tomorrow morning so that we could make one step closer. And again, chip away all the excess. You know what they are. Lust, greed, and anger, these are the three killing ones. Get rid of those first and try to be contented in life. Don't try to accumulate and build an ego. Chip away the ego. Hari Om Shanti Shanti Hari Om.